we start recording? I'm sorry. So, the mechanisms that we will discuss for sila, that is natural selection, genetic drift, mutation, gene flow, and migration. So, those are the four mechanisms that we will discuss. Okay, so our enabling objectives for today, number one is to identify the mechanisms that cause evolution and increased biodiversity. So the changes in population um, that occurs um, in nature, we need to identify those because they are the ones that will cause the eventual evolution of that population as well as overall increased biodiversity in our planet. Okay, so uh, new species in equals increased biodiversity. Okay, number two, appreciate the biodiversity of the earth by watching a short video on the evolution of Darwin or Galapagos finches. So we will be witnessing um, how evolution works in a small scale or how natural selection actually plays a role, an active role in changing the, dy the dynamics of a population, eventually causing it to evolve and um, form new species. Okay, lastly, the simple output for today, output for today is to create a simple poster highlighting the importance of biodiversity and or evolution. Okay, so those are our those are the objectives for today. Okay. Let's have our short prayer, Aldrin. Okay, let us pray po. In the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we praise and we glorify your mighty name, Lord. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa araw na ito, sa panibagong araw na ipinagkalab niyo sa amin, sa panibagong pagkakataon na magkatipon-tipon at muling dakilay na iyong pangalan. Lord, kami muling humihingi ng patnubay ngayong araw na sana bigyan niyo po kami ng wisdom, understanding, patience, na despite the pandemic that we are facing, we are still able to learn. Also, thank you for giving us your JP Lord na matyaga at buong puso nagtuturo sa amin na wapatuloy mo siyang ingatan at pagpalain, especially today, at sana maging successful at na execution niyo. Bless you as in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, thank you for that beautiful prayer, Aldrin. Okay, so let's move. <laughs> okay, just a uh, few reminders again. So, if you're going to recite or you're going to talk, you can unmute your mic, but if you're going to just listen to our lecture today, um, make sure that you are muted to avoid distractions. And most importantly, um, participate as much as you can and have fun during our lecture for today. Ayon. Okay, so let's have our short review. So this is a Kahoot in the um, game pin um, in our chat box So for a while. Okay, so this is the game pin. Uh, okay, here's the game pin. Please join our Kahoot for the review part of our um, lecture. So this is the link, 978-7309. Ayan, so we have here Miss Angeline, tsaka si Paul, nandito na. Ira. Mr. Banaag, si Angel, James, si Allen, Pia, si Jeremy, Aldred. Okay. Okay, thank you. So keep joining. Yan, medyo mabilis. Aldwin, si Yana. Okay, this is just a short review of our previous lecture. Okay. Yan, sila Lance, sila Charis, Miss Bettina, Dali. We have how many participants? So 42 tayo dito, pero di ko alam kung ilan yung students. Eh. Sorry. So around 30 plus siguro tayo dyan. Mga 38, 39. Sige, keep joining. Last 30 seconds to join. Okay, siguro pwede na tayo mag-start. 34, ayun, nawala. Okay, 34. I think we can start. Okay, 36. Ayan, 37. May tumatagtag pa. Okay, ready na ba? This is just a review, okay? Okay. First question. True or false? 
R.D. Weinberg principle is mainly observed in nature because genetic drift in gene flow cannot occur in these settings. True or false? Hardy Weinberg principle is mainly observed in nature because genetic drift in gene flow cannot occur in these settings. True or false? Okay, so false is the correct answer. Again, Hardy Weinberg um, is not mainly observable in nature. Kasi res the restrictions of Hardy Weinberg are um, mostly for computational studies and simulations. Next. Okay, in the leading, Miss Angeline, Lance, Ricky, Mr. Banaag, and Paul. Next question. Which refers to a small-scale evolution lasting for a few years? Macroevolution, microevolution, genetic drift, or natural selection, which refers to a small scale evolution lasting for a few years. Macro, micro, genetic drift, or natural selection. Okay, correct answer is microevolution. Very good. So, still in the leading, Angeline followed by Ira Lance. Si Mr. Banaag and then si Paul. Next question. Which chromosomal process is unique to prophase 1 of meiosis and contributes to genetic variability in organisms? Which chromosomal process is unique to prophase 1 of meiosis and contributes to genetic variability in organisms? May ba? <laughs> Very good. The correct answer is crossing over. Okay, so yung mga the chromosomes cross over in order to exchange genetic material between homologous chromosomes. Next. Wow, Miss Angeline still in the leading, followed by Ira Paul, si Mr. Banaag, and si Lance. So still the top five. Next. Hemophilia is a recessive disorder and occurs in about one of every 5,000 male births. Which of the following is given? P squared, P, Q squared, or Q? Hemophilia is a recessive disorder and occurs in, ab occurs in about one of every 5,000 male births. So which is given? Okay, correct answer is Q squared. If it is individuals, it should be Q squared. So if it is a dominant disorder, it will be P squared. But if allele frequencies are asked, then it should be the square root of those variables. So P and Q. So still in the leading, Miss Rei, followed by Ira, Lance, si Jose, and then si Ricky. Okay, last question which refers to a group of individuals of the same species that live in the same area and produce fertile offspring. Oh, madalila. Which refers to a group of individuals of the same species that live in the same area and produce fertile offspring. Is it a niche, an ecosystem, a community, or a population? Okay, that's correct. The correct answer is population. Okay, let's see who won our review game. Third place, si Lance. Okay, congratulations, Lance. Second place, Ira. Congratulations, Ira. And lastly, our first place is none other than Miss Angeline. Okay, thank you guys for participating. Let me pause for a while para uh, to resume our lecture. Okay, thank you. For participating. Okay, can you see my screen now? Can you see the slides? Okay, so let's watch a short video on the evolution of Galapagos finches. Okay. Wait lang, ha? Hmm. Stop my share. <clears throat> okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot to share the audio. Uh -huh. Okay. Can you see the video and can you hear it? Okay.
our planet has millions of species, over 300,000 beetles alone. Into that question, researchers are focusing on places where species recently arose, such as the remote Galapagos Islands. Scientists are making observations and conducting experiments that would have surprised Charles Darwin. And they're discovering new insights into what the great naturalists call the mystery of mysteries, how new species form. The Galapagos Islands are one of the most spectacular landscapes in the world home to a variety of species that live nowhere else. Biologists Peter and Rosemary Grant have been seeking answers to how species arise by focusing on one of the smaller islands called Daphne Major. When we started out, we had uh, no plan for the long term. In fact, we thought it was just going to be just uh, a few years, maybe two years. Two years have turned into a 40-year odyssey. The grants have returned every summer since 1973. Oh, that's a bird. That's three okay, six. that's three three six. Metal six. Here, they've made some of the most remarkable bit. observations in the history of field research as they studied the famed Galapagos finches. The finches were first brought to scientists' attention by Charles Darwin, when his voyage around South America brought him to this cluster of islands 600 miles from mainland Ecuador. These volcanic islands are geologically young. They began rising from the ocean floor less than five million years ago. At first devoid of life, they now support a modest number of species. Among them, 13 species of finches found in various combinations on the different islands. The birds live in diverse habitats. The islands are very different from each other. They differ in size, they differ in topography, and in height. Larger trees grow at higher elevations, while low islands have mostly cactus, grasses, and shrubs. In these diverse habitats, the finches have evolved many ways to survive. So, Rosemary, what's the important difference between these birds? This little warbler finch with its very fine needle-like beak is perfect for picking off insects. This one is the woodpecker finch with a rather more robust beak. It concentrates on beetle larvae and, and termite larvae. Then we have the cactus finch with a much longer, sharp pointed beak, which probes into cactus flowers. And then these three species are the large, medium, and small ground finches. So, Sean, the basic idea is the beaks are tools, and you need the right tool for the right job. The finches look so different that Darwin first mistook them for entirely unrelated kinds of birds. How did the Galapagos end up with so many species of finches? In terms of the actual history of the finches of the Galapagos, um, there were many different possibilities. Different kinds of finches could have all come from the mainland separately, or the finches could have all evolved out there on the islands. And what do we know about that? Well, now we know from DNA evidence that all of the finches are more related to each other than any one is to a species on the mainland. And that tells us only one species arrived on the archipelago and diversified into the 13 species that we see nowadays in the Galapagos. 
So they've all come from a single common ancestor. The question then becomes, how did one ancestral population give rise to many different species, each adapted to a different lifestyle? A crucial insight into how adaptation occurs came when the grants focused on one species on the island of Daphne Major. A factor of great convenience for us was the small size of the island. That meant that we could walk all over the place. Oh, there's a bird. I'll leave that one to you. The idea was that if we worked really hard, we could follow every individual or almost every individual. They rose at 5.30 each morning to net the island's medium ground finches. They measured the size and shape of each bird's beak, the bird's weight, and they tagged them for identification. The male is 17418. Year after year, they returned, at times tracking over 1,000 finches. So here's an example of a bird we know intimately over the whole of its lifespan. The number is 5960. We know how many times it bred, which years it bred in, how many mates it had, how many offspring it produced, and then how many of those offspring themselves survived long enough to breed. Over the first four years, little seemed to change. Then in 1977, a terrible drought began. Virtually no rain fell for the next 18 months. The vegetation practically disappeared, apart from a few trees without any leaves, and of course the cactus bushes were still there. Now the medium ground finches had to compete for scarce food. They started off with a big food supply of small seeds, medium seeds, large seeds. As these small seeds became very scarce, they had to turn increasingly to the large and hard seeds. Well, only birds with large beaks can crack open these woody, spiny fruits. The birds with the smallest beaks had the most trouble. They were scraping about amongst the rocks and their plumage got so worn that they could barely fly. That year, over 80% of the medium ground finches died. We would go around looking for birds that had died, and it's very sad to pick up a bird and say, 3972, oh no, not that bird, oh. When they inventoried the surviving medium ground finches, they discovered that one trait had made the greatest difference between life and death. Well, I'm showing here a distribution of beak depths of the population in 1976. The survivors of this group are shown in black. Oh. So the larger the beak, the better your chances. The larger the beak, the higher the likelihood of surviving through the drought of 1977. 18.6 grams. When they looked at the offspring, they found an even greater surprise. The average beak depth was more than 4% larger than the previous generation. Natural selection had changed the average beak size. Could you have ever imagined measuring and observing something like this on such a tort, short time scale until you actually did it? When we started, the answer is no. We could not imagine we would be able to do it. But was this a fluke? or are changes like this happening all the time? Five years later, in 1983, an unusually strong El Nino brought 10 times more rain than normal. And the island was overrun by vines that covered even the cactus. The rains changed the vegetation on the island, such that two years later, when drought struck, larger seeds became scarce. The birds with larger beaks now had difficulty picking up the more abundant food. 
the small seeds produced by the vines. That year, many more finches with small beaks survived, and their offspring inherited smaller beaks. So the selection had swung in the opposite direction, and evolution had occurred as a result. In an amazingly short period of time, the Grants had measured evolution of beak size not once, but twice, demonstrating that when birds encounter different environments, they will change over a very short amount of time. Over millions of years, changes like these, occurring throughout the Galapagos, generated all sorts of beak sizes and shapes. But that's only part of the story. How did finches with different beaks become distinct species? Species are defined as populations whose members don't interbreed. So how does one species split into two? A typical scenario is that two populations become separated geographically and undergo enough change in their respective habitats that if or when they come into contact again, they do not mate. So in the Galapagos, the Grants asked, what keeps different species of finches from mating? We were very conscious that on any given island, the different species sing very different songs. This is what a cactus finch sounds like. Whereas the medium ground finch sounds very much like this. So to see if songs keep the species apart, the Grants and their student Laureen Ratcliffe played each species' songs through a loudspeaker. When we played back the cactus finch song, cactus finch came to the loudspeaker and the medium ground finch completely ignored it. The males only responded to songs of their own species. Okay, so I think um, that is for the video. Okay, so let's go back to our lecture. So um, we'll process the video that we just watched pertaining to the evolution of the finches. Anyway, the next part of the video would just be explaining how um, the species or the populations, um, how the populations did not interact with each other or how they ignored each other. So basically, the characteristics that evolved over time made them um, uh, or enabled them to create different types of songs or sounds as well as their visual appearance. So those two things um, are the mechanisms which uh, enabled the two species to separate from one another. They, they do not uh, breed with each other anymore because of the differences in visual characteristic as well as their song. Okay, so anyway, that's not our focus. Our focus here would be, um, our focus here would be how natural selection played an actual active role in producing um, different species or evolution or um, evolving the population itself. Okay, so number one, let's answer the first question here. What characteristic was observed by the scientists in finches? So what characteristic was mainly observed by the scientists in finches? This is... Okay, that's correct. The big size or the big depth. Okay, variation, big size or... Uh, big depth. So yun po yu, uh, that is the focus of um, Peter and Rosemary Grant. So their focus is um, the big depth. Okay, one of their focuses is the big depth or the big size. Number two, um, what key event happened that shifted the population favoring the bigger big finches? So what key event happened? Very good. That is correct. Drought. Okay, so there was a drought in 1977 which um, drastically changed the allele frequencies of the finches. So from smaller, uh, from a balanced big size in the population, suddenly after the uh, during the drought, 
it favored the bigger beak size. Okay, there was a drastic change. Okay, next. Number three, so what term refers to the ability of nature to pick out individuals who have characteristics better suited for the current environment? So this was also stated in the video. So this is very good, natural selection. And like I said earlier, natural selection is one of the four mechanisms that we will discuss today. So natural selection at work was observed in the video. So you, you watched it na, di ba? Um, the drought was a key event which enabled nature to pick out individuals better suited for the environment. So since drought favored cactuses or, or plants that produce larger seeds, um, nature therefore picked out individuals in the population which had bigger beaks. So the ones with the smaller beaks um, eventually died and they they are not able to reproduce therefore they will not be able to pass down that trait okay number four so here's just um, a pondering question do you think the hypothesis for the evolution of Galapagos finches can be applied to different organisms endemic to our country or to the Philippines so do you think this hypothesis could work out on some organisms here in the Philippines yes very good so the very nature of our country, diba? it's an archipelago. So the very nature of our country, um, each island therefore is already geographically isolated. And what the host said earlier, um, evolution, ideally evolution can occur in if a population is separated geographically. So since our country is archipelagic in nature, um, the hypothesis for the evolution of finches can be greatly applied to some of the species endemic here in the Philippines. Okay, so very good. So, um, like I said earlier, we'll be discussing the mechanisms that cause the change in the population. And the very first thing that the scientists in the video said is natural selection. So this is the first mechanism that we will discuss. So in natural selection, uh, it basically makes use of the genetic variability in the individuals of a population. So if you can remember our last discussion, um, genetic variability occurs in each individual. Um, we are alike in the sense that we are human beings, we are of the same species, we have um, similar characters, okay? We have similar characters. We have a face, uh, the, placements of, the placements of our appendages, uh, the organs that are present within us, but there is still variability to these characters, okay? So what are the variabilities? For example, all of us has eye colors, but... Um, we uh, all of us has irises but we differ in the color of our irises some of you may have brown irises some may have blue or green or for foreign foreigners so those are the things that um those are the things that vary within each individual in the human population so this also occurs in different populations of different organisms for example here we have a beetle so a beetle population with green and orange pigmentation. So for example, the birds, since their eyesight is more um, keen towards the, for example, towards the green, um, green wavelength of color, they, they would be able to pick out beetles of green color. So eventually, the alleles in this population would shift since the birds only eat or can only observe green beetles, eventually the population would shift entirely, okay? Since the green beetles would eventually become extinct. Only individuals with the orange pigmentation would be able to survive, therefore reproduce, and therefore pass this trait onto their offspring, therefore creating an entirely new species. So that's how natural selection works. So let's put this in the context of the video. So in the video, in, during 1977, there was a drought. There was a drought. So Peter and Rosemary Grant observed that during this drought, a lot of the um, plants, uh, a lot of the plants which produce smaller seeds uh, died. So uh, they were... 
uh, decrease, uh, they decrease in population in the island. Therefore, no more small seeds or very few small seeds. The finches with smaller beaks, they cannot open the available seeds present in the island during the drought because the ones left behind were larger spiny seeds, which only um, bigger beaked individuals can open. Therefore, the smaller beaked individuals eventually died off and they were not able to reproduce. Therefore, they were not able to pass down that shape or that characteristic to their um, possible offspring. Therefore, individuals with the larger beaks, they were, the, they were um, able to uh, grow and reproduce. They're, they were able to pass this trait down to the next generation. That is why in just a few years, Peter and Rosemary Grant observed that after the drought, the average beak size increased drastically. Diba? There was a 4% increase in the average beak size just within a few years. And that is microevolution at work. Okay, So in the history of the, Gal the Galapagos Islands, therefore, a lot of these... Um, a lot of these processes, natural selection, occur over time, over millions of years, therefore producing new species. Okay, So the hypothesis, according to the video, the hypothesis um, was that there was an original population from the mainland, only one, only one original population from the mainland flew towards Galapagos Island and they are the original ancestors of all 13 species of finches in the island. Okay, so that is natural selection. Next, we have genetic drift. So the first mechanism, natural selection. Next, we have genetic drift. Genetic drift are chance events. Okay, these are chance events that cause allele frequencies to fluctuate unpredictably. So unpredictable events. So like the example here, for example, the middle population, um, a man stepped on green beetles, for example. Therefore, the allele frequencies in this population would drastically change because a lot of the green individuals would die off. Therefore, uh, the population would be dominated by the golden colored beetles. Okay, So in the example, again, in the video, the example would be the drought. And during the drought, uh, the, of the surviving individuals were the ones with higher beak depth or beak size. Okay, they were the ones that survived. Mm -hmm. Therefore, um, after the drought, the average beak size of the population of the finches increased. Okay, so what are the other chance events? So the chance event that happened in the island was the drought as well as the La Nina. If you can remember in the video, there was increased rain then after a few years. So after a few years, there was increased rain and then this in turn favored the smaller beaks. After a while, the, the evolution shifted the population into a completely another direction, the opposite direction. Okay, So that is for the genetic drift, a chance event. So what are other chance events? It could be an earthquake which separated an island completely into two islands, a volcanic eruption, a forest fire, a typhoon. So those are some natural events which are also chance events for a genetic drift. Okay? Mutation, this is um, the last two mechanisms are not um, somehow not related to the video, but they are still important in terms of producing change in the population or in producing evolution or causing evolution. So like we said last time, mutation is the sole um, reason or is the sole process in producing new alleles in the population because there is no other way to produce a new allele besides mutation. Okay, so it is a change in the entire sequence of the DNA. No, it is a change in the sequence of DNA. It can be a point change or just one base change or several bases uh, are changed. Okay, so there are different types of mutation, missense, nonsense, insertion, deletion, duplication, and frame shift mutation. So basically, these types of mutation, um, it, it changes the way the cells read the DNA sequence. For example, here, the normal hemoglobin okay, has the middle bases, RT and letter A. 
But in the mutated hemoglobin or in the sickle cell anemia, uh, the middle bases are changed into A and U. Therefore, the amino acid for the, for the sickle cell anemia changed into valine. So the normal, it should be, I think this is glutamic acid. So it should be glutamic acid. But since there is a small one base change, it turned into valine, a completely different amino acid with completely different properties. Therefore, changing the entirety of the hemoglobin. Okay? Next, the last one is gene flow or migration. Basically, this is um, talking about the movement of fertile individuals. So here we have an example of two populations of deer. And they are separated by a mountain, but there is a pass. Okay, so there's a passageway. Um, the individuals of one um, population, the western deer population, can move to and fro to the eastern deer population. So, and vice versa, okay? The eastern deer population can also do that. So eventually, if the movement is, uh, um, if the movement is extensive enough, if the movement of these infertile individuals is extensive enough, it can result in the two populations forming one single population. Since the movement is extensive enough, there is exchange between fertile individuals and eventually they would also reproduce the two separate populations can fuse into one single population. Okay, so that is for the gene flow or migration. Okay? Okay, so for the output for today, I hope you're ready with your art materials. So for 15 minutes, you have to create a simple poster highlighting the importance of biodiversity or evolution. Okay, so you, you need to create a simple poster um, just, you know, highlighting the importance of biodiversity or evolution. This is um, a simple and uh, quite funny one. Biodiversity is love and biodiversity is life. Okay, so you don't have to draw like these complicated um, shapes or um, complicated animals. It, it can be just a simple, um, a simple poster. It's not for a poster making contest. Okay, so you, you have to do this in 15 minutes and then you're just going to show it. Okay, you, you have to turn on your cameras and then show the poster that you made. And that will be your output for today. Okay, so you have to take a picture of that output and then you have to send it to Helene. Um, then she will upload it to the drive in research. Compile it and then upload it to the drive in research. So don't forget to write your name in the file. Okay, so to give you um, the rubrics, this is the rubrics. You can take a screenshot or a print screen so that you would be guided. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. So I think screenshot is okay now. To give you an idea, uh, one idea that uh, about the importance of biodiversity, I'll be stating this one. Since um, we're experiencing a pandemic um, until today, we're still experiencing a pandemic till this time, um, let me highlight the importance of biodiversity to human health as well as disease ecology. So if you think about it, uh, if you think about that, biodiversity is some, somehow like um, not related to these types of topics. No, um, It can be unrelated to like diseases or pandemic and such, but in reality, it biodiversity is, is actually important in a lot of areas, including food security. So um, let me discuss to you the importance of biodiversity to human health. Okay, so here we have um, the statement by ha Han and Ostfeld. Deforestation and human encroachment into wildlife habitats have been associated with the emergence of several zoonotic diseases, including HIV and Ebola. And knowing the current hypothesis for the origin of SARS-CoV-2, um, this is also relating to the illegal wildlife trade and illegal market of um, different exotic animal meats. Um, deforestation, um, if, if this occurs over time, a lot of the uh, sleeping diseases and unknown diseases found in these areas can eventually uh, creep into our population. That is how we introduce different types of viruses and diseases to our, 
into our population. And that is already proven with the case of Ebola and HIV. These are the results of human encroachment and deforestation. So another function or another importance of biodiversity in disease management or human health is um, the direct there is data saying or data stating that there is a direct correlation between the increased incidence of different infectious diseases to the decreasing mammalian and avian species diversity. So this demonstrates the protective and regulating service of biodiversity in our planet. So there is a correlation. According to the data stated by the scientists, there is a correlation between the increased incidence of these diseases to the decrease of diversity in animals. So in a way, biodiversity actually has a protective and regulating role in terms of disease ecology. But as humans do not consider biodiversity as somehow relating to human health. But I hope this opens you up to the idea that biodiversity actually plays an active role in protecting and regulating diseases that could eventually reach our population. If we do not consider biodiversity until the next few years, there could be another pandemic, okay? Another pandemic similar to what we are experiencing right now. So we should be um, considering this um, aspect of our environment. Okay, so I think that is enough to give you an idea about the importance of biodiversity. It still has a lot of importance. You have 15 minutes, so it is 12.02. We should finish at around 12.15 for the poster. Okay, so I'll leave you guys be. Um, create the poster within five minutes. You don't have to. Uh, you can create a digital poster. Pala. Some students um, in my previous class created digital poster, but I need you to show it. So if you if you're making it in, if you're creating it in another device or such, you can show it to me. Or if you're um, creating it in your laptop, send it to your messenger so you can show it on your phone or on your mobile. Okay, but for those um, not part not well versed in digital poster making, you can create it on paper lang. Okay, so you just write the slogan and then like the designs and all. So poster highlighting the importance of biodiversity and or evolution. Okay, so I'll leave you guys be. I'm just going to mute myself.
Okay, last four minutes. Last two minutes. Okay, last minute. Okay, time is up. So can you guys turn on your cameras and show your poster? We will document this. Can you turn on your cameras and just show your poster? If you're done, show it to the camera. Ayan, very good. Wow, Miss Reig. In 15 minutes. Wow, that is really beautiful. Okay, some of you made digital posters. Very good. Wow, okay. Utilizing uh, the digital skills. Sige, can you turn on your cameras to show it to the camera before I print screen? Everyone, come on. Ayan, very good. Okay, all species matter. Healthy food web save lives. Okay, gaganda. Very good. Those are all cute and really meaningful. Okay, ready? Ready, everyone? Okay, let's document. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, smile. Go. Okay, very good. Thank you guys so much for participating in our documentation. Thank you. Okay, lastly, do you have any questions for our topic for today?
Okay, let's have first our objective check. So have we identified the mechanisms that um, cause evolution and increase biodiversity in our planet? So did we identify the mechanisms? Okay, very good. Yes, so we identified the four mechanisms. What are the four mechanisms? <clears throat> what are the four mechanisms? The first one. Very good, natural selection. And then we have genetic drift. Very good. And then we have mutation. Very good. Lastly, we have genetic flow or gene flow or migration. Okay, thank you. Very good. Number two, did we um, appreciate the biodiversity of our planet by watching the short video and answering some processing questions after? So have we done this? Okay, very good. Yes. And lastly, did we create a, a simple poster highlighting the importance of biodiversity and or evolution? Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you guys so much. So do you have any questions? Let me just stop my recording. <clears throat>